actually took the cab back in 2008, many, many years ago. And it was quite new, but I had just joined um, the plan giving kind of profession. And it gave me a lot of credibility when I found out about the cab. Um, so with those letters after my name, it actually helped me start my own consulting business. Um, so I love the cap just because it really helped my career and the relationships I have. Um, so when I had the opportunity to come back um, and teach, you know, the cap, it was one of those, wow, of course I'm going to do it, right? Um, but it's we, we have 2,500 caps now, which is amazing. We have for-profit, non-profit, um, spans the whole spectrum of the social sector. Um, it has become the go-to kind of destination for philanthropy advisors. started my work at the American Cancer Society. That was my first nonprofit work um, as the plan giving director. And it was one of those, come, we would love to have you, but we don't know what it really is. So you're going to have to figure out how to build it yourself. <laughs> and then that seems to be in my, like the start of all my different careers is, you know, come and build. Um, but if you go to a lot of these plan giving councils, this was back in 2008, 2009, um, there were just not a whole lot of us to begin with, but there was not a whole lot of BIPOC folks in plan giving at the time. When I came to the San Francisco Bay Area where I live now, um, I, I started my work at the Asian Pacific Fund. So imagine the same week, Erica, of working with a all white team, all white donors, that's on Monday and Tuesday. And then by the time I got into the Bay Area on Friday, I was like, oh, look at this. The whole team at Asian Pacific Fund is all API. And I have all API donors, right? So that shift was like in my, it took me a while to kind of grasp that. Um, but it was just an amazing shift to have. I wish I'd say that a lot has happened and we've actually done great things and now it's much more diverse. Um, unfortunately, that's not the case, right? That's why I think the work with CAP and the advisors of color is so important because I promise people they'll never be the only one ever again to walk in this space um, by themselves. So the center is trying to do a lot of research on what philanthropy advising is, um, who's in it, and then also looking into the future of well, what are the skill sets, right, that philanthropy advisors need, and then how are we going to train them, and then how do we make sure everyone is included in this process. To me, when we talk about redefining philanthropy, um, I want to make it a little bit broader and say, it's about knowledge and access to education, particularly wealth, like generating and passing on the tools, right? Um, and in our work as philanthropy advisors, giving tools like the donor advice funds and the private foundations and the chair made trust, we need to know this and we need to make sure we pass this on to other communities as well.